This is a weird video. This was captured by a woman in Massachusetts. She looked up and literally started filming a dead bird hanging in the air. There was nothing around it. It wasn't stuck on a power line or anything like that. It was literally just frozen mid-air stuck. They have no idea on what, how, or why. Other videos, other witnesses have captured like palm trees, other animals, other birds just stuck in mid-air. Is this a glitch? What is going on? This is a dead bird literally just floating. Oh my gosh. What is going on? Flat earthers argue that beyond the ice wall surrounding our known world, there might be a hidden civilization. This video delves into what such a place could look like if their theory were accurate. What if there's an entire world beyond the icy barrier we're not aware of? Of course I've never set foot in Antarctica myself. So the truth remains a mystery. Our understanding of the world is limited by our experiences and the information we have access to. This video opens up a fascinating realm of possibilities, sparking curiosity and wonder about what lies beyond our current knowledge. Whether or not there's something to these theories, exploring these ideas can be a thought, provoking journey into the unknown. This video is making headlines for a reason. In South Korea, they've developed a gadget that's practically a car thief's fantasy. It's a super fast device that slides under cars, lifts them, and moves them with pinpoint accuracy. This video has gone viral around the world. In South Korea, they recently invented this thing. Look, it moves super fast on the ground, but watch what it's capable of doing. It positions itself right under cars, and in just a few seconds, it manages to lift the car and take it exactly where it needs to go. But look, the most impressive part is with this car. We have a better camera angle. The two square-shaped robots come and position themselves right under the car's wheels, and boom, they take it. They then move it and rotate it. They can take it absolutely wherever they want. Incredible. Like having your own personal valet. 
but way cooler and way more high-tech. Imagine if this thing gets into the wrong hands. We might see car thieves showing up in tuxedos asking, may I park your car for you? Seriously though, this gadget could make car maneuvers look like a luxury experience. NASA's InSight Lander has just suggested that Mars could be hiding a stash of water 712 miles underground. If this turns out to be true, we're in for an incredible ride. This discovery could explain the mystery of Mars missing water, but what's really blowing my mind is the potential for present life. Forget about the signs of past life. If Mars has liquid water right now, it could mean there's actual life lurking beneath its dusty surface. Imagine that. While we're searching for life on distant exoplanets, it might be sitting right under our noses on Mars. This could be a game changer for our understanding of the universe and our search for extraterrestrial life. This footage comes from Nicole, who recently moved into a new house with her boyfriend. Before they moved in, her boyfriend joked about the house being haunted. Since Nicole's arrival, strange things have been happening. On one of her first nights alone in the house, she captured something unsettling on camera. What's going on here? Nicole moves into a new house, and suddenly she's capturing eerie footage of what looks like a ghostly presence. Is this just a case of a house with a spooky history? So, we're looking at a supposed fallen angel here. The way she's sitting, with that cloak covering what could be wings. Definitely adds to the mystery. The whole vibe is eerie yet fascinating. Is she resting, hiding, or maybe contemplating her next move now that she's earthbound? If this is a fallen angel, what's the story behind the fall? Was it a rebellion, a punishment, or something entirely different? Footage shows two mysterious objects or phenomena appearing simultaneously, with one farther away and another approaching. The observer notes their unusual timing, mentioning they were up late for several nights but hadn't seen these objects before. Another one coming right behind those. Wow. Whatever they want. I mean, I never see them early in the morning. I was up till five in the morning last night. Previous night, I was up till five in the morning again. I didn't see any of them. So. The speaker, a happiness coach, is excited about new research suggesting the line between life and death is less distinct than previously thought. So this just came out four months ago. The new science of death. There's something happening in the brain that makes no sense after we're clinically dead. They discuss how, after clinical death, the brain experiences an electrical surge and the pineal gland releases DMT, hinting that we are more than just physical beings. By connecting with our non-physical self or soul, they believe life improves in all areas, relationships, health, and pursuing dreams. They encourage embracing this perspective and thank others for sharing their near-death experiences emphasizing that we are much more than just human. New research is suggesting that the line between life and death may be less this distinct than previously thought. And I just posted something yesterday or a few days ago about dying and how death doesn't exist. And what I'm really speaking from, first of all, is a place of happiness and joy about redefining or understanding more about this life that we live and having more joy while we do it. I'm a happiness coach. Happiness to me is a state of being, not just a temporary emotion, but it's a way of seeing things. And when we die, they're now finding that when we're clinically dead, when all the, you know, all the machines are going, this person has passed, 
there's this electrical surge in the brain that happens after we're dead. What's going on there? Well, an interesting thing that happens that we know when we die, and the same thing happens at birth, by the way, is our pineal gland, which sits right in the center of our head, releases DMT, a huge burst of DMT. Same thing happens when we sleep. And what that goes to show me and what I like to communicate to you is that we are these bioelectrical beings that are mostly actually electrical. We're actually already a part of this energetic system. We're already dead, you could say. And when we pass from this body, when we leave this body, we actually go back to the majority of who we are, the larger portion of who we are, the non-physical, the dead so-called version of us. It's not really dead, but that's how we see it in today's terms. So what we're starting to find is that there's this consciousness or this, some people call it a soul. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it electrical energy. It doesn't matter. But if you've ever been around somebody who is died or if you watch somebody die close to you, you can see that transformation and you can feel it more importantly. You can feel that that person, that essence of them is no longer in that physical vessel, right? And so the science is starting to catch up with that and to me this is really exciting and I want to make sure that people see that this is a good thing. Um, a lot of people left a lot of different comments, but this is a great thing because what this says is that you're not limited by the classical limitations that we think. And when we start to identify more with that non-physical part of ourselves, I call it a soul, I call it our, our true self, our authentic self, our heart center self, when we identify more with- The idea that science is showing something happens in our brains after we're clinically dead is both weird and comforting. I've been around someone at the end, and you can feel when they're no longer there, like their essence just moves on. It's wild to think that maybe we're more than just our bodies like we're part of something bigger. The whole thing about the pineal gland releasing damp at death just like it does when we sleep or are born makes you wonder if life and death are just different parts of the same journey and if realizing this can actually make life better, better relationships, better health, more freedom. That's something I'm all in for.